In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. Join Apostle John Udo today as he teaches the Word that was with God and is now with us for our transformation. Apostle John Udo, worth hearing. Again to hear from you. And we know you are always eager and ready to speak to us. So we open our hearts to hear and to receive that which will guide us aright. Lord, I thank you for understanding heart. I thank you for quick understanding. And I thank you for grace to practice that which we hear from you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Today I will be speaking on the topic hidden secrets to getting everything that you need hidden secrets to getting everything that you need or if you want to add the biblical you also add the biblical hidden secrets to getting everything that you need I'll be taking my reading from the book of John chapter 16. John chapter 16 from verse 23. John chapter 16. From verse 23. In that day shall ye ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name ask and ye shall receive that your joy may be full hallelujah i'll take verse 25 and 26 these things have i spoken unto you in proverbs but the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs. But I shall show you plainly of the Father. At that day shall ye ask in my name. And I say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you. For the Father himself loveth you because ye have loved me and I have believed and have believed that I came out from the Father from God I came forth from the Father and I'm come into the world again I leave the world and I go to the Father glory be to God now before I go into the main teaching of the day there is something that caught my attention here in verse 26 it says at that day you shall ask in my name remember whatsoever we get from God we get in the name of Jesus Christ so he says you will at that day you shall ask in my name and I say unto you, and I say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you. In essence, Jesus is saying, because you have believed in me, you now have direct access to the Father. He's saying, I don't have to tell the Father, Father, you need to answer this one. He said, I don't have to tell the Father about you. 
about your prayers before the father answers your prayers so as a believer you now have direct access to ask the father for anything as long as you are asking in the name of Jesus why verse 27 says the reason is because the father himself loveth you hallelujah this is very important turn it down a bit this is very important that means the reason why the father answers my prayers is because the father loves me so once anybody can understand that the father loves him then that person has come to the place of being able to get answers from the father because he or she knows that the one who loves does not withhold any good thing from the one he loves john 3:16 for God so loved the world and what did he do he gave that means anyone who loves gives to the one that he loves whether the person ask or does not ask true love does not only give when request is made true love gives whether request is made or not those of us that have been in love before whether for a long time or a short time love you know those campus love that last three months or six months and then you graduate and you have gone your way you realize that when you love a person you are ready to give everything you have to that person even to your own detriment some of us spent our school fees on the sisters we loved they didn't have school fees so we gave our school fees and decided to exercise faith for our own school fees because of love so when once you become the object of love of God you are automatically positioned to receive everything and anything from God so Jesus said I will not have to talk to the father to release anything to you because the father himself loves you I want this to sink into you that knowledge that understanding that the father loves you remember he's loving us it's not because we are qualified for it in fact the Bible says in that while we are yet sinners Christ loved us and died for us so if when we were yet sinners he loved us to the extent of dying for us how much more now that we are born again washed by his blood what do you think he cannot do for us do you understand what i'm saying what do you think he cannot do for you when you were a sinner you were not qualified he came and died for you and now you are born again you are redeemed you are washed by the blood of the lamb you are now a son of god tell me that thing that he cannot do for you tell me that thing that he cannot give to you the object of his love the bible says what manner of love the father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God hallelujah it says for the father himself loveth you 
and the reason why the father loves you is because you have loved the son and have believed that the son that the son came out of the father in essence the reason the father loves you is because you are born again being born again means believing in the son of god and accepting him as your lord and your savior that makes you saved that means you love jesus you believe in him and the father is saying jesus is saying the reason why the father loves you is because you accepted his son you love the son and so the father loves you and the father is ready to do anything for you now when you understand this you know that when you pray answers must come because you are not trying to compel him to give to you you are only flowing and basking in the love that he has for you you pray because you know that you have somebody that will answer you pray because you know there is somebody that loves you and is ready to give you everything and anything so when you approach prayer with this consciousness you eliminate every kind of doubt as to whether god will answer or not the greatest challenge to prayer is doubt doubt you doubt whether he will answer you and once you are in doubt the prayer is hindered but when you understand that the father loves you and the father is eager to answer your prayers you don't have any doubt in your heart you just know that all i need to do is ask and then the father answers and gives to you even when you are not qualified remember it was not our goodness that made him to love us and die for us he died for us loved and died for us when we were not qualified and so even now even when we are not qualified as born again children in the sense of not meeting up with what it takes to receive the answers if we understand the premise of god's love we can still draw abundantly from the lages of god the abundance of the goodness of god that has been laid up for us the bible says how great is your goodness stored up for those who fear you hallelujah and so we go back to verse 23 it says and in that day shall ye ask me nothing verily verily i say unto you whatsoever ye shall ask the father in my name he will give it to you wow that's the most i consider that to be the most audacious statement ever for someone to look at you and say anything you ask my father he's going to give to you i mean can you imagine you you went to visit a friend and his father is a billionaire and then the son tells you just before the father steps into the living room says to you boy anything you ask my father he will give it to you you were planning to ask for transport transport fare before then you heard anything you ask my father he will give it to you he's the one that owns the oil well at so 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 place he owns about five banks in the country uh, he has this he has that just anything you ask he will give it to you and you are not the first person or anybody i bring here anything they ask he gives it to them and you tell him you are sure he said oh boy just ask tell me what are you going to ask him? will you ask for transport fare automatically you you will begin to think of big big things to ask for i want you to start thinking like that towards god 
Uh, do you understand what I'm saying? I want you because this is Jesus bringing you to God and saying, anything you ask him, he will give you. You as long as I'm the one that brought you. He said, anything you ask the Father in my name, He's going to give it to you. And then He said, verse 24, He that told you have asked nothing in my name. He says, all those ones you have been asking, it's a waste of, it's a waste of time. You're just asking for bread and tea. He said, ask, ask for something. Ask for something that heaven will know somebody has asked. I mean, Joshua ask for the sun to stand still that's something to ask for and some people approach god all they need is some little crumbs of bread and they are saying god you know uh, god you see god if you can god oh. when the bible says in matthew chapter 7 from verse 7 ask and ye shall receive seek and ye shall find knock and it shall be opened unto you for everyone that asketh receiveth. Everyone that seeketh findeth. And to everyone that knocketh, it shall be opened. I was listening to a man of God, one of the patriots of the gospel in Nigeria. And he said he was having a building project, a personal building project. And he went to the bank. To cash some money with his check and when he got there the his account officer told him sir there is no money in the account he said how can there be no money in my account when i'm the son of the living god he needed five million naira he said how can there be no money he said okay hold on my father will drop money within the next 45 minutes i'll be outside inside the car He said, I'll be the guy said, I mean, there is no money. He said, What is wrong with you? I am the son of the living God. I cannot be without money. I pay my tithe. I serve my God. Just meet me in the car within the next 45 minutes. Money must have dropped in the account. He went and sat in the car. Within 45 minutes, the banker ran out and said, Sir, who are you? How do you do it? He said, What are you saying? He said, 10 million naira just entered the account. He said, so why are you outside? I said, you should withdraw and bring for me. He said, I, I needed to come. He said, oh God, bring my money. I have a project to do. The guy withdrew the money, gave it to him. He said he was shaking. He said, sir, are you a are you human being or are you a spirit? Because I don't understand you. See, there are men that have come to the place of, they have asked and received, asked and received, asked and received. So it has become a normal thing to them. They can comfortably ask for anything from the father don't you remember the prodigal son after he had squandered everything when he came back he was saying daddy uh, actually if you can just make me like the servants you know i'm not asking for anything big you know i am not qualified uh, if the father said keep quiet keep quiet bring the best robe put it on him put sandals on his leg put the best ring in his hand kill the fattest cow for this one that feels as if he is not qualified that is to tell you the heart of the father if you truly know the heart of god you will not have stress receiving from the father if you truly know that he loves you so much he is ready to spend everything on you i mean the prodigal son had wasted everything he gave him wasted it and the father knew what he wasted it on gambling women and everything then he came back apologizing asking just to be treated like servants but the father said no once you are a son you are a son forever hallelujah i want you to say i am a son even if you are a daughter say i am a son <laughs> joint hairs together with christ I want this mind to be in you. And so that's how the man of God took the money, went and uh, used it for the project that he needed to do. No wonder the Bible says all things are possible to him that believes it. 
in essence if you have not assessed those things yet you have just not believed enough so you need to start working on your capacity to believe God for things capacity to believe for breakthrough capacity to believe for healing capacity to believe for progress capacity to believe is word enough for that word to begin to come to pass in your life I watched another man of God he said when he was on campus he was the campus pastor and so it was exam time and he had not paid school fees and that means you will not be allowed to enter to write the exam because you have not paid school fees so he said he got to the exam hall but he could not enter because he knew that it means they will bounce you out and so he stood outside there watching people seated already ready to write their exams and he was calculating lord what do i do now i have not paid school fees and then suddenly another brother ran towards him and said pastor help this hand i said pastor pastor thank you jesus thank you jesus he said, Oga, okay, calm down. What are you? You know, his own trouble is how to enter. And somebody is holding pastor's hand and saying, thank you, Jesus. He said, what is the problem? And the guy said, you know, I told God that if I can just see pastor around, I will enter that hall and write the exam, even though I have not paid the school fees. If I can just see pastor and touch him and hold his hand, nobody can send me out of that exam hall. He said, look at the guy like this. As soon as he heard the pastor, he ran inside. Sat down. He went to the front. Sat down. He was discussing with others. Got his paper to write. That's why pastor said, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Me carrying the gene, I am outside here. The one that touched me is inside. No, I'm going inside. That was how he went inside and wrote the same exam and nobody disturbed him. I want you to be conscious of who you are. I want you to be conscious of what you are carrying. You are the son of God. And he loves you. You remember Jesus said, the father is going to answer and do these things because he loves you. He's not going to wait for me to come and intervene. He loves you. And so I want you to be conscious that the Father loves you and be bold to approach the Father and be bold to request for things and be bold to demand for things. What the Father was teaching the prodigal son was simply that forget it, just be bold. No matter, even after you mess up and lose everything, just come boldly. After all, the Bible says, let us therefore come boldly before the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need i want you to be bold about your pursuits with god be bold about your prayers and it will amaze you what will begin to happen he says he that told you have not asked anything in my name all those ones you have been asking they are small he said ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full hallelujah Remember, our topic today is hidden secrets to getting everything that you need. If you read through the Bible, one of the first things you will notice is that the Bible teaches that we can get everything that we need. The Bible. In the place of prayer, in the place of service, in the place of consecration to God, all through scripture we discover that we can come to the point where we get everything that we need there's nowhere in the bible that says anything is impossible all through scriptures we are admonished we are counseled we are instructed we are told that anything is possible if thou canst believe all things are possible to him that believeth mary the mother of Jesus said to those men, he said, anything he tells you to do, just do it. He told the son, there is no wine in the meeting. The wine is finished. The son said, mother, what have I had to do? What do I have to do with you? Because it was not yet time for him to start performing miracles. He was walking according to the calendar of heaven. It was not yet time.
time for him to start performing miracles. But the mother said, as far as I am concerned, there is no time when it comes to miracle. I gave back to you. So, <laughs> her mother's faith provoked the miracle when it was not time for miracles. Hello, somebody. Please take this reflection away. Aya. Her mother's faith attracted miracles even when it was not time for miracles yet. Hallelujah. What a mighty God. And even when the son said, Look, Mama, forget about it. It's not time for me to do miracles. She left him and went to the people and said, He's my son, I know him. He has the power. Just go and stand in front of him and keep looking at him until he's tired. He will do it. And he, he said to she said to them, Whatever he tells you to do, just do it. Even if it does not make sense, do it. And they went and lined up in front of him. They said, Mama said we should come. Listen, the faith of mothers can be powerful. When you see a woman of faith, fear her because she can move mountains. I listened to Archbishop Benson in the house. He brought two women out and he was sharing their testimonies. Two of them, their children died and they came to Archbishop Idahosa at different times. One, the child fell from upstairs and broke his skull, like 17 feet. She threw the child in a pickup and brought the child to the church. I said, where is my father? The, the reverend in charge that met him, met her outside. I said, hey, yeah, sorry. Oh. Sorry, I heard what happened. He said, sorry for you. Is you something happened to? Where is my father? My child must come back to life. They called that bishop. Said, please. See the child here. Raise him. My child cannot die. That bishop was saying, calm down. He said, there is no coming down. Raise. She took his hand, put on the child's head, and the child came back to life. Desperate mothers. He said, the other one was in the hospital. She came and dragged him from the office. He said, come on, come on. They said, doctors have lied. Satan has lied. They said, which lie? Which? He said, come. They said, my son has died, but it is a lie. Follow me. Oh. My son must come back to life. Dragged him down to the hospital. He got there and the doctor took him aside and said, please. Uh, Madam, please go and buy also so so drug. He said, I'm not buying any drug. Oh. My son is not dead. I am going to stand here till my son come back to life. So Archbishop said, he told her, okay, try, go and buy the drug now. She said, Papa, not you know, my son must not die. So the doctor took him aside, took him in and opened the cups. He said the head was like smashed tomatoes. The body was already, so he covered it and came out and said, you see, um, you will go and buy those drugs that doctor said you should go and buy. He said his own calculation was that while she is gone, he will return to his office. He said, I know they buy any drug. My Pekin must come back to life. Doctor, you lie. They said, Reverend Father had already come and blessed the cops for St. Fort. So by force, he was forced to go and pray because the mother was demanding. And as soon as he commanded life, the son came back to life. The fate of a mother. He brought the two women out in the service and was talking it, pointing at them. One was already settled in America, doing fine. One that should have been dead. But because somebody has a place with the father where he can call and the father will answer. Answers appeared. Now these um, Bible verses I've read for you, John 16, 23, 24, is in the King James Version. In the 
in the original Aramaic version. There are certain things that we are edited out. When the the verses were being translated from the Aramaic language into what we have now, you know, language differences can make you edit some things out because you don't have the words in your own language for those things so you describe them as best as possible and in the process some valuable things can be lost and so if we go back to the original aramaic translation of these two bible verses you will discover something very interesting so i'll read it for you in the original in the retranslated version the real translated version from aramaic it says john 16 from verse 23 all things that you ask for straightly and directly from inside my name and so basically we are in him and we are inside his name so we are already qualified by that to ask for things he says you will be given so far is and he said you will be given but so far you have not done this that means you have not been operating by the consciousness that you are inside my name and you are asking from inside my name you don't have that consciousness and because you are you don't have that consciousness that is why you have not been getting results like you expect to get i believe you know that we are in christ and christ is in us we are the temple of the living god god lives inside of us you know the bible tells us teaches us that god dwells in light that's god's dwelling place he dwells inside inapproachable light that's where he lives that's his address God does not live in heaven as it were because the Bible says heaven is his throne the throne is like the office it's not the bedroom it's like he goes to office you know kings will go come out to where the throne is but they don't sleep where the throne is they go to sleep where they sleep you understand where they live is where they sleep so if heaven is his throne we can say heaven is his office if we insist that heaven is his dwelling place then where did he come from to create heaven because in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth where was he when he was creating the heavens and the earth that place must be home and so the bible says he dwells in inapproachable light that's his home that's his residence and then in john chapter 1 the bible says in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god the same was in the beginning with god all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made in him was life and the life was the light of men and so that light that inapproachable light is deposited inside of us in him was life and the life was the light of men and that light shined in the dark and the darkness comprehended it not so by introducing this inapproachable light into us he turns us into his dwelling place because we know that he lives inside light and so he put that light inside us and lives in us because we are now his temple so he the father the son the holy spirit now abides inside of us and so he's in us and we are in him and so all things that we ask for strictly and directly from inside his name we will get them but so far you have not done this then it says ask without hidden motive 
this is where I want to dwell the next few lines I'm reading ask without hidden motive and secondly be surrounded by your answer being enveloped by what you desire so that your gladness be full so he says two keys here that we're going to dwell upon number one ask without hidden motive and then number two after you have asked without hidden motive number two be surrounded with your answer in essence he's saying be enveloped by what you desire so that your gladness can be full in essence Jesus is saying if you want answers to your prayers practice this take away every hidden motive when you are asking remember James chapter 4 verse 3 says ye ask and receive not because ye ask amiss that ye may consume it on your lust so that's the asking with hidden motives you are asking because you want to consume it on your lust you are asking not for the glory of the father it's all about you and yourself it's all about your personal gain and your family it has nothing to do with the will of god some people ask for prosperity because they want to show everybody that they are prosperous they are asking a means the bible says let him that steals steal no more but let him walk with his hands so that he can have to give to the needy in essence why a man walks and gets money is so that he can bless he said let him stop stealing rather let him walk and when he walks he is walking so that he can have to be able to bless others so in the mind of god the true essence of prosperity is to be able to bless do you understand the true reason why God wants to bless a man is so that he can make that man become a giver to others. And so when a man begins to pursue prosperity outside of that agenda of God, he is asking amiss. He is asking with hidden motives, contrary so the true purpose of kingdom wealth that God has put in place many want to build a house but all they want to do is they want to show everybody that they now have a house but look at that woman that built a house all she wanted to do was build an extra place for the man of God to sleep hallelujah so james 4 3 says you have you ask and receive not because you ask amiss you ask so that you can consume it upon your own lust you see once your motive is right you are already on the right track to get answers to your prayers and how can you get your motive right make sure you are asking according to the word of god Make sure you are asking according to the will of God. That's how you can ask aright. That's how you can ask and not be in a wrong motive. So, feed on the word of God. Let the word of God be your life. Let the word of God dwell in you richly. Let the word of God influence your thoughts and your decisions. So automatically when you are asking, you don't ask amiss because you are guided by the word of god your desires are steered up by the truth of the word of god inside of you so once you are asking you don't even need to check whether 
you are asking a miss or not because you are a man of the word you are a man of truth and so you just pray and answers come so once we get it right in relation to our motives according to the Aramaic text the next thing we need to begin to do is to ensure that we become enveloped by what we are asking for that is to say you begin to live in the reality of what you are asking for even before you get that thing you bring yourself to the place of experiencing it in your mind i believe you've been there before where you wanted something so desperately you were behaving as if you have that thing already how many of you have been there you wanted it so much you wanted the car so much you sit in your parlor and you are turning the steering and your wife said oga what is happening say oh sorry you become so engulfed by that thing that you are literally demonstrating that thing even though you don't have it yet that is what i mean by being enveloped by that desire and so for example you want to begin to walk in miracles signs and wonders and you pray and desire it what do you begin to do next you begin to imagine yourself healing the sick you begin to visualize yourself on crusade grounds commanding demons to vacate and they are vacating you see yourself traveling to the nations you see god has so blessed us with an imagination that does not need international passports to travel no immigration services when it comes to your imagination no roadblocks no checking points you can travel from here to your village no stress you can move from there to america and then branch in paris and still come back while we are inside the service hello and so god must have given us such imaginations for a good reason hello he must have given us the ability to go far and near for a good reason so he wants us to be able to step into the future experience the future and draw the future into the present and make that future become a reality that's why the bible says now faith is the substance of things hoped for you are hoping for it but you have the substance hello somebody do you understand what i'm talking about you are still hoping for it but you you are claiming to have the substance you are surrounding yourself with the substance of something you are still hoping for and so that's what this scripture verse is saying that when you pray with the right motive the next thing you necessarily need to begin to do is to surround yourself with your answer this bible verse does not emphasize really talking and praying and praying about it once you have prayed and made the declarations begin to surround yourself with that reality begin to think miracles begin to study about miracles research about miracles watch videos about miracles signs and wonders read books about miracle workers meditate on walking on walking miracles let it engulf you so much that anybody that sits you down to discuss the only thing you think of talking is miracles what you have done is that you have surrounded yourself with the answer to what you are asking for you have enveloped yourself with it the zeal of that thing 
has consumed you to the point that you think of it you dream it you talk it you wake up before you sleep that's what you are thinking while you are sleeping you are dreaming it you wake up in the morning it is what is on your mind some of us know how it was before we got married to the woman we are married now you think of her before you sleep you dream while you are asleep you dream of her you wake up she's the first person you call without even saying praise the lord you enveloped yourself with her until you married her and so the bible speaking of jesus christ you remember how in john chapter 2 he went and drove the money changers away from the temple all those selling things in the temple he made a whip and drove them out and when his disciples saw him doing this the only thing they could remember was john chapter 2 verse 17 the zeal of thine house has eaten me up so jesus was so eaten up by the zeal of the house of his father to be eaten up means to be devoured he was so eaten up by it he didn't care what would happen he stepped into that temple exploded that reality and drove all those people out men who can surround themselves with the answers they are expecting cannot be stopped they cannot be stopped have you not noticed that when you start thinking of buying a particular car everywhere you turn you will see that car you will see people driving that car have you have you observed it once you start saying i want to drive a toyota corolla everywhere you go toyota corollas will begin to appear it's because your mind has become so attached to toyota corolla they begin to show up you begin to see them different colors everywhere you go it's the power of the mind to attract what you want to you and if you will persist and build up the intensity of that desire by faith you begin to see opportunities opening up for you to get that toyota corolla so in order for you to continually get answers to your prayers and get the things that you need from god you must let the desire for that thing consume you i remember when i began to desire to open blind eyes i'd been praying for the sick and all of that the sick was healed and one day i just decided what does it take to open blind eyes i mean i see it in scriptures and i've i've read it in books i've seen people laying hands on blind eyes on tv and it happened i decided me too you know how you say me too <laughs> i became desirous i prayed about it and then i began to meditate on opening blind eyes i began to study the bible researching everywhere blind eyes were opened studying how it happened i became so conscious of how to attend to matters of blind eyes that suddenly within that season i received the call and immediately i got that call the man said sir please you need to come to my house my wife and her younger sisters have gone blind instantly his wife and the younger sister who came to visit them became blind instantly in one night and as soon as the call came i knew that this thing i have surrounded myself with it is time to experience it in full i jumped in the car excitedly and drove to the place as i stepped in the house they brought out the two women blind 
And then I heard the voice of the Lord that told me exactly what to do to get their eyes open. And I gave the instruction and instantly both of them, their eyes were restored. I had enveloped myself with that reality. It had become part and parcel of me. Nobody could convince me that blind eyes would not open. So when you begin to desire for something, study about it. The Bible says, study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Research, ask questions, record things about it, think on it, desire it so much that you even begin to dream about it. I believe you've been there where you desired something, you kept praying, researching, and then you start dreaming about that thing. You even dream about the way out. You dream of solutions. You dream of the right direction to take concerning that thing. It's because you have been attracting that thing to you. And suddenly you will find out that all things begin to work together for good for you concerning that matter. Opportunities begin to come. Doors begin to open. Channels begin to open up to you. And I believe you remember such times when you meditated on something so much. You desired, wanted something so much. And as soon as you stepped out, somebody just gives you that thing. And you're like, how did you know I wanted this thing? Ah, it was your meditation on it that magnetic because the person could have given another person. But you are concentrated on it so much that that force of the power of God magnetic that person to bring it to you. So you need to begin to see yourself in that thing already. If you are praying for healing, see yourself as healed. Don't address yourself. Let me say this. It is better not to address yourself as one that needs healing. But rather, address yourself as one that is healed. See yourself as healed. I am healed by the stripes of Jesus. I am healthy and strong. Let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. So see yourself as married already. If you want to get married, begin to see yourself. Imagine yourself as married. When you are at home alone, just don't let people hear you. Just say, hey, my dear, where are you? <laughs> you begin to demonstrate it. He said, my dear, this, this, this food, uh, the, the pepper is much today. You are the one that cooked it. But you say, my dear, this, this uh, food, the pepper is much. And then you imagine, she say, oh, sorry, my dear. He said, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. I love you. <laughs> Even the angels will know we better give him a wife. So see yourself in that thing already. Imagine yourself carrying your baby already. And begin to give thanks. Thank you father for this my baby. Get names for your babies. Put them down. Address them by the end. When you are praying, Lord I pray for this. Stephen, you will be a great man. Meanwhile you are not seeing Stephen. But faith is the substance of things hoped for. So you have the substance. Stephen is right there. So you are dressed. The Bible says God which call it those things which be not as though they were. And you are made in the image of God. So don't wait till they appear. Speak to them because you know they have appeared. The God which gives life to the dead. And calls those things which be not as though they were. Once you begin to visualize things like that and meditate upon them, believing the promises of God concerning them, confessing those promises of God concerning them, 
you will suddenly begin to see the evidence the infallible proofs of those things showing up in your life ha, there have been situations where people believe god for something they begin to smell the thing literally smell it perceive the aroma of it you are believing god to own a bakery you pray so much and meditate so much on bakery you are in your house you are smelling the smell of bread oh you don't know it's real you smell the bakery already even before you physically get in because you have attracted it so much you're asking did you can you perceive the smell of bread and the other one is which bread there's no bread in this house and you say no i can't perceive it is that not how elijah elijah said i hear the sound of an abundance of rain he was the only one hearing it But just keep hearing it because very soon others will feel it. But you operate at a higher level where you hear it and see it and feel it before others can hear and see and feel. That's because you know how to pray. And not only pray, you know how to surround yourself with what you are believing God for. I heard the story of uh, the American Indians, the first American Indians, how that whenever they want rain to fall, they don't wait for rainy season. They decide when rain falls. They have what they call the rain dance. They have their drums and all of that. They have the dancing steps ecstatic dancing step so they begin to dance excitedly being grateful for the rain that is falling in their mind the rain is falling already they they dance and roll they beat the drums they are so excited about it and suddenly rain begins to fall real so they build up that momentum till they literally begin to feel as if they are getting wet they surround themselves with what they are believing god for and suddenly that thing they are believing for becomes a reality remember for as a man thinketh, so he is as a man thinketh, if you think rain you get rain if you think wealth you get wealth if you think poverty you get poverty if you think delay you get delay if you think losses you get losses if you think wealth you get wealth if you think sin you get sin if you think righteousness you get righteousness hallelujah Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 says now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us where is the power it's in you the power to make those things happen it's in you because the holy ghost is in you acts chapter 1 verse 8 but you shall receive power after that the holy ghost is come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me beginning in jerusalem and unto judea and unto samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth so the power is in you in the bible says unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above what you ask for and what you think so god does not only answer what we ask he answers what we think so we can think greatness into our lives we can think blessings into our lives and people can think sicknesses into their lives why do people catch diseases that are spreading around as soon as it breaks out people become afraid of catching it they start thinking i hope i'm not the next one to catch it uh, they start researching the medications that will be used for that sickness in case they catch it and so they are surrounding themselves with the reality of that sickness and suddenly they wake up in the morning they have caught it 
they attracted the sickness to themselves by the way they thought but there are some people that will say i can never catch it it's not my portion and they forget about it they meditate on good health check it everybody will be sick around them but they will not catch it because they surrounded themselves with good health and the light shines in the dark and the darkness comprehended it not glory be to god i quoted earlier on romans chapter 4 verse 17 about god the bible says before him whom he believed even god who quickened the dead romans 4 17 and collect those things which be not as though they were philippians chapter 4 verse 4 says rejoice in the lord always again i say rejoice covenant people don't sorrow over things they rather rejoice over everything this is because sorrow is an atmosphere joy and gladness are atmospheres and the atmosphere you create around you determines what you attract to you So no matter what you are experiencing don't subject yourself to sorrow if you subject yourself to sorrow you are surrounding yourself with negative vibes and you will keep attracting the negative things to you but the bible says in all things give thanks for that thanksgiving in the midst of all that is happening is the will of God for you. It is not the will of God for that bad thing to happen. But it is the will of God to, for you to rejoice despite the bad thing that is happening. So in the midst of it all, you are giving thanks. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith who through the joy that was set before him endured the cross and despised the shame and is now set down at the right hand of the throne of god and so jesus had negative things going on people were accusing him they dragged him to the cross and all of that but the bible says jesus christ focused on the joy that was set before him his attention his faith was on the substance of what he was hoping for he was hoping for the joy ahead of him and he drew it into his reality into his present reality and so instead of being sorrowful on the cross he was saying father forgive them for they know not what they are doing a sorrowful man will not say father forgive them is that not so a sorrowful man will say punish them keep them all of them were right on the cross because he was joyful he was not being affected by those things he was he was being affected by what he believed by what he saw ahead the joy that was set before him he despised the shame he endured the cross and then he got into that joy he was set at the right hand of the father and so never allow sorrow to be your atmosphere never allow sadness to be your atmosphere listen you surround yourself with things whether you realize it or not consciously or unconsciously every day and every time you surround yourself with things once you are sorrowful there are things you are surrounding yourself with once you are joyful there are things you surround yourself with Demons, for example, thrive in atmospheres of sorrow, bitterness, depression, anger, and strife. 
So if you don't want demons to constantly suppress you and prevent your blessings, what do you do? You change your atmosphere. Let your atmosphere be according to the word of God. Let it be atmospheres for miracles. Atmos you know there is atmosphere for money. Hello? When that atmosphere comes upon you, that is why you begin to feel the itch in your hand. That is why that brother would say that every time money is coming, his finger begins to shake. It's because an atmosphere has been activated around him. And once he becomes conscious of that atmosphere and cling to it, the blessing comes in. And the good thing is that you can determine your atmosphere regardless what is happening to you. Even God had to create an atmosphere of light before he could go into the fullness of creation. He said, let there be light. And there was light. Why didn't he just enter the darkness and begin to produce things? He knew the darkness was an atmosphere that would not allow for the things he had in his mind to come to pass. So he changed the atmosphere and then he began to manufacture everything that he needed to manufacture. There are things that need to come that to become a reality in your life but you need to influence your atmosphere. You need to surround yourself with the reality of that thing by faith and then you will begin to see it manifesting on every side in your life so the bible says be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind so your transformation is depending on you and what are you supposed to do renew your mind he says be transformed and you say come how can i be transformed help me he says no it's your work renew your mind be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind so your transformation is dependent on the renewal of your mind so the state of your mind is what determines the state of your life so if I believe in my heart for grace, all grace, for all sufficiency in all things, so that I might abound unto every good work, I believe in it enough, it becomes my reality in my mind. And before you know it, the manifestation of that grace becomes evident all around me. If you believe that there shall no evil come near you, it's a renewal in your mind. It transforms your life and keeps every kind of evil away from you. The story is told of a young lady that was to pass through a lonely road. But she was bold and confident. She had faith that no evil shall come near me. She passed by that road and got to where she was going to. But another sister was coming who was always afraid. I hope I will not be kidnapped today. I hope it is not my turn. They said they are catching people everywhere. Oh Lord, oh Lord. You are praying, but you are afraid. And so she is highly expectant that evil will happen. And Job said, what I fear most befalls me. And so when that other sister passed by that way, that's when the criminal remembered that, hey, I need to catch somebody. Because she created an atmosphere around her that resonated with the hoodlum. But the other sister had an atmosphere that dispelled the hoodlum. So he, the hoodlum saw her passing but could not imagine touching her. Because they were not on the same wavelength. So what you consistently think of and meditate on soon appears in your life. A 
And so scripture says, think on these things. So if you're going to be getting answers to your prayers and getting anything that you need in life, begin to think now about those things. Meditate on them. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 as I close. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then you will make your way prosperous. And you will have good sources. Do you see it's all about you, 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 you. You are the one that studied. You are the one that meditated. You are the one that uh, had good sources. You are the one that made your way prosperous. By taking the word of God and putting it in your heart. By hearing the word of God like you are hearing today and acting on it. The Bible says faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. So faith is stirred up in your heart. And faith is the substance of something you are hoping for. So from tonight now you are not just hoping for it. You have the substance. Because faith has been stirred in your heart by the teaching of the word of God that you receive. That's why you see men arise from a knowledge of the word of God and say, it's a done deal. That matter is settled. I have the word of God. I believe. I have received. And it happens accordingly. Because they cut the truth. I see you walking in this light from today forward. Rise upon your feet and begin to declare your stance. Begin to surround yourself with your answers. Begin to magnet to yourself the things that you believe. Begin to walk in the reality of the things that you consciously draw to yourself. is yours already in Christ but you are the one that will draw it that song says we've come to draw, draw, draw draw from you again scripture says with joy you shall draw waters out of the well of salvation you are the one to draw my brother you are the one to draw my sister and the state of your mind determines whether you can draw or not. So I choose to draw. I choose to surround myself with the answers to my prayer. I choose to think on the right things. I choose to meditate on growth, increase, enlargement, prosperity, blessings of every kind. I choose to believe that all things work together for good for me because I love God because I am called according to his purpose hey. Letting me the fragments of him. Aya. All of the better bashes will be full. Ele mana maga te de ne mi yo de na maga sa te ne mi yo da ya ba ya de sa ba ba ba. yourself coming out of the depths coming out of poverty coming out of being a borrower becoming a lender to nations begin to imagine yourself preaching the gospel from nation to nation from country to country Begin to imagine yourself prospering, prospering. Surround yourself with that reality. Surround yourself with signs and wonders.
Jesus. A boy in a cruise in the lake of Paclito Sumbra. Ay, 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 la masa, ay, ay, la cruce de la macata Dios. Hey, Shabala, la macute, la pica propia, la cosa que. been blessed by this ministration follow apostle john udo on facebook at apostle john udo to follow on youtube type john udo ministries if you need prayer counseling deliverance or follow-up call plus two three four eight zero six zero three six one four two one plus two three four eight zero six zero three six one four two one and remember, all things are possible.